Solo here checking in from the once independent Lone Star State. So I have been thinking about a topic for quite a while and I had a conversation with a couple of folks, uh, specifically uh, PT Daly and uh, Lester Skinner last night. And we were talking about the idea of seller management. And I know this is topic that I haven't frankly seen a lot about on the YTPC and so I've been kind of interested in exploring the idea of seller management so I've been asking some folks some questions trying to get ideas and um, you know at the end of the day I haven't come to any conclusions but what is seller management so for me seller management is the idea of kind of the the, the purpose behind having a seller, right? The purpose behind having a seller is to age tobacco, to stock up on tobacco so that you have more than what you're gonna smoke and so that you can age that tobacco. As we all know, tobacco changes over time. I won't say that it gets better because uh, I assume that some probably does get better and some might not. Um, so it's kind of an experiment. We know some things like Virginia's we know those tobaccos get better. They continue to ferment. Um, and again, I use the term better loosely because it could be just they get different. Um, so the idea of cellar management is the idea of managing that process of putting tobacco into your cellar and then managing that and trying to balance that in terms of what you're buying today so that you have ample tobacco supply to, to smoke on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, while you're also building up that kind of repertoire of, of tobaccos that you're gonna smoke in the future. And so I've got a couple of ideas, and as always, there's some stick in the spokes, but the idea, um, Lester actually came up with this idea, and I really liked it, kind of kind of latched onto it. He was kind of theorizing that the, the ideal tobacco seller, and I, I think I tend to agree with this to, to an extent, um, the ideal tobacco seller is one that has maybe two or three blends that you are certain that you like today and you want to experiment with how they change over time and when i say two or three blends i mean two or three blends within each of the tobacco genres what does that mean um, tobacco genres in my mindset is um, let's say Virginians is a genre. English would be a genre. Um, I know they're categories or whatever, but I just kind of think them, think of them as genres of tobacco. And so you'd find two or three tobaccos within each one of those uh, genres that you like, and those are the tobaccos that you focus primarily on for your seller. And I say there's always stick on the spokes. There's some exceptions to this. I also think it's kind of fun to take tobaccos that you're not real sure about and put those in the cellar as well and the reason you do that is because we know that tobacco changes over time no matter what kind it is and so there's a possibility that that tobacco that you're not too fond of or you're not too sure about might change in such a way that you like it in you know a year three years five years whatever that time frame is and so how I go about doing that is, is I open tins and I'll smoke some and if it's one of those blends that I'm not really sure about I'll put it in a mason jar I'll cap it and I'll throw it in my cellar and the idea there is that um, it might change to the better way you know it's something I like better and so um, I've kind of taken to doing that so my cellar is growing from that perspective, and I haven't really focused on those two or three blends that I know I like, which is kind of why I'm thinking about shifting gears. So I think a seller typically, and I'd like to get your thoughts on this too, but I think a seller typically would have um, kind of two uh, plans in terms of management. One is the things you know you like and you want to experiment, and then second is the things that you're not real sure about, or you know you might be sure but just don't want to smoke them every day, and you have those in your cellar. And so how long is 
a proper amount of time to sell air? Well, I don't know that I can answer that question. And I don't know that anybody can because my assumption is, is that uh, different tobaccos will taste different over any period of time. So my approach to that in kind of thinking and planning for you know an actual managed seller is five year planning horizon. Now why five years? Because my thinking here is, is that if I stock up enough tobacco for each individual selection that I have, let's say let's use Bayou Morning as an example. I know how much Bayou Morning I've smoked in the last six months. So I need to times that by, by two and I need to purchase that for the next six months as well as the next year. Now, if I want to go all in and just buy five years worth, but what that's going to do is it's going to age that five, that tobacco five years all at once, right? And I kind of like that idea because I know it's a huge expense up front, but I like that idea because then you can pull out from that every year and see how it changes. And then in order to maintain that long-term five-year aging date, every year you buy one year's worth of tobacco to add to so that in five years you, you touch that. So it's kind of a rotation of that one blend. And I know this is this is why I don't think a lot of people do it because it kind of gets confusing. And I don't think you can have that approach with a whole lot of tobacco. So I think you maybe do that with one of the uh, blends that you know you really like uh, in each one of the genres. So I'm thinking about doing that with Bayou Morning, buying five years worth and every year, one purchase, or spread out over the year, I continue to, um, you know, as I pull whatever that supply is out for my day-to-day -day smoking, I'll put it back in, in some fashion or another, right? Um, the other idea that we came up with as we were talking is kind of the idea of what I would call the tobacco stock market. And... I heard this, I heard Brian Levine talking about doing this in a small way. Um, Brian Levine is the host of Pipes Magazine podcast. And he mentioned he had Pipe Stud on, and they were talking about selling uh, aged tobacco. Pipe Stud typically only sells things that are, you know, five years old or older. And he mentioned that he took, I don't know the exact number, but he took let's say 20 tins of tobacco that he had that were aged five years. He put them up on Pipe Stud and he sold them. And he used that money to buy like 60 tins of tobacco. Well, that kind of got me to thinking that might actually be a good way to do future seller management. If you play your cards right and you were able to acquire some tobaccos that would not only age well, but would increase in value. And we know what those are. I mean, those are, you know, your Penzance, your Esoterica blends, um, any Dunhills if you have them still, things that are, you know, leaving the market, certainly McClellan, tobaccos like that, where you can leave them in your cellar, not with the intention of smoking them, but with the intention of selling them, and then using that money to reinvest into whatever is hot, at that moment today. Now, there's risk there because whatever's hot today might not be hot uh, in the future, but that's kind of why I was thinking it. I was kind of drawing the parallel between, you know, the stock market, whatever's hot today might not be hot in five years, and tobacco, right? Same story. So just a couple of ideas on how you might want to approach your seller management. All I know is every time I look at my seller and I've uh, acquired quite a bit of tobacco over the last six months. As I look at that seller, I realize that I kind of have a shotgun approach at this point, and I need to get a little bit more, um, let's say, intentional with my tobacco seller. And so these are kind of the ideas that I'm thinking through. So I'd like to get your feedback. Um, I know this is probably a topic that's a little bit more in-depth then maybe a comment or two, but if you can, uh, leave a comment down in the crane case and let me know how you manage your seller. If it's too much, 
to type out in you present or you've thought about presenting, um, go ahead and do a VR. I'd like to I'd like to get a little bit more in depth into this topic and maybe create a conversation because, like I said, I I've seen a lot of people's sellers. There's a slew of videos out there where people are talking through their seller, but no one really talking about how they actively manage their seller, or even if they do, and I'm not sure if they do or not. So um, I want to learn more on the topic, and uh, I'm a planner, so I want to have an approach. I want to know that you know in five years I'm going to be set up for success. I probably have five years worth of tobacco already. Uh, in various places in the house because I tend to stash it in different places, you know. Only one life. It's so many tobaccos to try, right? Um, and I mean one wife to complain. Um, but seriously, my wife is, is more than uh, forgiving and understanding, so I appreciate her. Let me know what you think either down in the comments or do a VR, um, tell me what your process is, if you have one, or, or if you just don't feel like it's necessary, you don't feel like you really need a process uh, to, to really manage your seller. So I feel like there's advantages to gain if you do though, and I'm kind of thinking through those, so I'd like to get your thoughts. So as always, keep the rubber side down, I'm Roguelide Soli.